Well, hi, thanks for joining me here in my shop. Today I won't be repairing a radio. Instead, I'm going to be focused on the piece of equipment you're looking at, the, the BK3030 sweep generator. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is uh, one of you has asked me if I wouldn't go over how I make use of this instrument here in my shop, and specifically how I might use it to check uh, an IF uh, transformer. Um, I think outside of a radio, like like if you had a box full of IF transformers, you wanted to check them and see which ones were, quote, good. How could you do it with this instrument? So, so uh, this is very good for me. I've had this for, I don't know, a year, year or two. Uh, I think I know what I'm doing with it. Um, the request has forced me to reread the manual. And, uh, you know, the way I see learning, and I think this is just true, I don't think there's any controversy about this, is that it's a very iterative process. You need to go over things again and again and again, each time picking up a little more, each time correcting some of your some of your mistaken notions about it. So, uh, so it's good for me at this point to go over in detail uh, with this instrument since I've got some experience and I, I've been around the track a few times with it. So, so what is this guy? Sweep Function Generator. So sweep generator is what it is for me, the function generator part. I don't make much use of That's something you might want to use more with digital circuits. This piece of equipment is new enough that it's designed for use both in analog circuits, the kind of thing I do, and also for use in digital circuits. Uh, one limitation of it uh, is it only goes up to 5 megahertz. So in radio work, y you probably want to go at least to just above 10 and the reason for that is uh, in an FM radio uh, the IF runs at 10.7 megahertz so so this guy's really not helpful certainly with FM for other reasons too but for an AM radio it, we, you can make this guy do everything you need to go through an AM radio I have a couple signal generators in here if you've been watching my videos you know uh, I often use a different signal generator I, I, I use this one here. I'm just going to pop it up on the screen for a sec here. So uh, often I use this signal generator. This one puts out one frequency. It, it doesn't sweep. It just puts out one frequency. Son of a gun. So this one puts out only a single frequency, but it puts out a modulated signal. When you listen to uh, an AM radio, you're not hearing the carrier signal, you're hearing the modulation signal, you know, the program material. My uh, 3030 is unmodulated. It, it has no modulation in it. It just puts out a carrier. So both of these instruments are useful in a shop like mine because often you do need some kind of modulation. Uh, m maybe there's a way to put modulation into this? I don't think so. I, I haven't seen it anywhere, so I, I don't believe there is. Uh, you can force this guy to produce an FM signal, but again, it's got to be 5 megahertz or lower. So I, I don't know how that would be valuable in a radio shop, but there, there is a way to do that. So I think uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook the output coming out of the main out here to the scope, which is sitting right here. And we're going to watch the different signals that come out of this and watch on the scope a little bit and see if we can't understand what's going on. And I also have my own uh, IF transformer on this old radio chassis. Hey, it's still full of parts. But the IF transformer is actually isolated away in there. So we'll be able to experiment with the sweep generator and the scope and see if we can figure something out about this, uh, uh, about that IF uh, transformer. So, uh, so as I said before, this is a multi-purpose device and it's easy to get caught up in some of the functions that may not be so useful in a radio uh, environment. So you have, you have uh, we just run run through here. Um, so a sweep generator you target a low frequency and an upper frequency and then it slowly or at some speed moves up through it as you're going to see. It can move up through it, I'm starting with, with this set of buttons, in a linear fashion or it can move up through it in a logarithmic fashion. Okay, <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know if I'm doing a good job. I'm demonstrating the logarithmic motion. So 
Normally, I never push this in. It's always left out on linear, L-I-N, linear. The run button uh, makes the unit run, so you need you need this on. Gate is, uh, I, I, I believe you can trigger uh, trigger the thing to, uh, it's like an external trigger. So I guess if you push run, you've got an internal trigger running. Uh, push gate, you've got an external trigger running. Manual means you're triggering it to sweep once. Every time you push this button, it sweeps once. So not interested in much of that. Just like having it on run here. Okay, so we'll look at some of the other controls. Like this amplitude is very important. This controls the output level coming from the main out. It works in conjunction with these buttons. Okay, so we push these in, they are off. So there's no attenuation. The attenuation is off. You let the button out, 10% uh, reduction in the output level here. If you push this one out with it, now you got a 30%, 10 plus 20. You get 30% this way, 40%, you know, all kinds of attenuation settings here. Sometimes to do what I'm doing, I need to run this guy at maximum output to get him to do what I need him to do. And I believe that's 20 volts peak to peak output coming out of here. You have all these off, and this thing turned up full, like that. Is that hard on the machine? I don't think so. I think this is a piece of well-built test equipment, and uh, yeah, you can damage it, but you'd have you have to be doing something really unusual uh, to damage it. And I'll take that back. There's probably a couple of easy ways to damage this thing, and just. To, finish that off by accidentally pushing signals into these connectors, uh, strong signals back into them. That might not be the smartest thing to do. Uh, but normally that's not what's happening while you're working. So level control, level control coming out of here. Uh, when you turn this all the way down, it really is pretty much a zero coming out, by the way. So now, um, I guess we'll talk about these two controls. So this is the meat and potatoes controls here. Let me just switch hands. So I'm gonna just remove this for a moment, get it out of the way. So you see, these two controls look very identical. They work very identical. This is the start frequency set control, and this is the stop frequency set control. It takes a while to get used to these guys. One of the reasons is, one of the settings is S. I guess there's only an S on this side. When you flip this to S, it gives you a full range of this setting, which I'll explain in a minute, up, up to this setting, let's say, just using this, all the way from 0 hertz all the way up to 1 megahertz, start frequency. I guess when this is on S, I, I thought there was an S on this one, but you see, there isn't. So. Perhaps when this is on S, both controls now just work from the vernier. We don't normally have this on S. We normally have it on 0 0.1, 0 0.2, see, all the way up to 1. 1 what? 1 times this setting. So this is the range setting. This is here, range in hertz. The little knob inside is start level. So I'll explain start level a little bit later. Right now it's just this range in hertz up to 1 megahertz, up to 5 megahertz, up to 100k. So if you want this thing to work in a radio IF of 455 kilohertz, then you've got to have this guy set at least to here. It's going to go up as high as 1 megahertz. Not necessarily. If you set the stop frequency lower, it will stop lower. Okay, so I'm going to put this back on now. I think I had it here, didn't I? So the sync output is, for me, is a handy place to get a signal to send to a frequency counter. But the fact is, this instrument, and mine, mine is, really very accurate off these controls. So for radio work, you don't need super precision necessarily. Some, sometimes you do, but not always. Now these controls are completely satisfactory. But if you want to do some things very precisely, you're going to need to hook up a frequency counter in some fashion. This is how I've done mine. 
So right now, we'll put both these buttons out. So you see on the frequency counter it says 1,189 hertz. Okay, so this is the start frequency. If I turn this control, you'll see what it does. 0 0.2, 0 0.3. So what frequency have we got here? 1 megahertz, something below 1 megahertz. It's going to be 428 kilohertz. So if I put this all the way up to 1 and zero out the vernier here, you see how close that is to 1 megahertz. 1 megahertz, 900 kilohertz, 800 kilohertz, 700 kilohertz, 600, 500. So this is like a coarse adjustment and this becomes the fine adjustment within it. So you see, if I set this to 0.4 times 1 megahertz, that's 400, 400 kilohertz. If I set this down to zero, we get just about exactly 400 kilohertz. It's slightly off. And you just turn this up all the way, and you've basically gone up to the next setting so your your vernier is taking you between 0.4 and 0.5 all the time. Now it's be between 0.5 and 0.6. Kind of got it. Now how did I get this up on the screen? Let's set this. Let's set this to a good start frequency for an IF check. So IFs run at 455 kilohertz. So we'll set this at let's say well 420 is not bad. Eh? Well let's set it at 400. That's as low as I can get it. If I really want it to 400, I think I would set it to 300 and then turn the vernier up and I can get it to 400. There we are. Uh, my unit is very, very stable. It doesn't drift around. It's, it's, really, it's a very, very good signal generator. So right now what's coming out of here is 400 kilohertz, just a steady 400 kilohertz. Now, if we want it to sweep, through 455 we have to set the stop frequency and this is where things get really weird on this machine so these two switch this is about these two switches these two are out right now when they're both out you see the start frequency or the frequency that's actually down here if you want to see the stop frequency you need to push the stop button and the sweep button why they have it arranged like this, I've never figured out any logical way of why they did it like this, but they did. So, you can't get the stop frequency by just pushing this. You need to have the sweep on. And you can't get the start frequency by releasing the stop with the sweep on, because it starts sweeping. So, starting 400 kilohertz, stopping 125 kilohertz. Well, that's actually lower. This machine will sweep backwards. It will sweep high to low, low to high. Just depends where you set these. So we want this to start at 400 and stop at 500. So we're going to advance it to 500 and turn the vernier here. Let's do it. Let's do it exactly. So I'll go down 400 and turn this up. See if we can get it right on 500. There we are. Now if I turn on the sweep. Oops. It's now sweeping. When you look at the frequency counter, you don't see that. You don't you don't see it counting up. I can make it. I can It's sweeping very quickly. Let me slow it way down. Now you can watch it count up. So this is the speed of the sweep. This is quite important in radio work. Uh, normally you have it running as fast as possible up here. 10 milliseconds for the sweep to go from the low setting to the high setting. So I mean, just take, we haven't looked at the scope yet, but just take a peek of what's going on there. It is sweeping very, very slowly. And you have a number of settings here. T 10 seconds to do the whole sweep. Doesn't matter what the frequency range is. If a bigger frequency range is there, the machine will run faster to get through it in 10 seconds or one second. You can still kind of read these numbers. 
get an idea where it's going. 100 milliseconds now, so at 10 times a second. Wow, these are starting to become kind of a jumble. The screen looks like that, by the way. But we'll, we'll talk about that in a sec. And we put it on full speed. You can't really figure much out from this now. This will tend to show the middle frequency roughly. See? 400 to 500, the middle would be 450. You see how it's kind of bopping around the middle? Not really a problem. Just something worth being aware of. So we've looked at output amplitude. We've looked at start and stop frequency. We've looked at the range control here. And we presently have this set up to sweep between. Let's check it. If I push the stop in with the sweep, we see the stop frequency, basically 500 kilohertz. If I turn the sweep off and turn the stop off, we see the start frequency, 400 kilohertz. And now we can be pretty assured. Yeah, I push stop in when I shouldn't have. Of course, you push stop, it stops sweeping and shows you the top frequency. Okay. So there she is, sweeping away now from 400 kilohertz to 500 kilohertz. What are we going to do with it? I'm going to turn our attention. Um, I'm going to turn our attention, I think. I think, I think we better look at the scope. Yeah, I think we better look at the scope. So this uh, output here, which says sweep out, is really intended to go right to the scope and become the X or horizontal sweep. The signal will push it vertically. The signal you're trying to measure, this thing is going to push it this way. Now, normally scopes do that internally. Let's go take a look at my scope. So right now, uh, you're just seeing a bunch of noise here. Let me just get rid of it. You see the sweep line going across. This one right here. See if I can make this go. Maybe I can't. This might be bad. Come on. But what I'm trying to demonstrate is that the scope will sweep internally. Put it online. Come on, baby. I have a lot of trouble with the sweep on the scope. And I have not done any, made any effort to fix it. Okay, you'll have to trust me on this. In, 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 and if you know about scopes, you know all this. But if you don't know so much about scopes, the reason the line moves across is because there's a circuit inside the scope pushing it across. And at the, the dot, the dot moves across. And when it moves fast enough, it just turns into a line on your eye. It's actually moving across, turning off, coming back, starting up, moving across, turning off, coming back. That's what it's doing. When you use the uh, uh, signal generator, it provides the signal that will push the dot across. And the way on this scope, and most of them will be the same, it'll have a setting here called XY. There. So I just turn this to XY. Now what's happening is the scope has changed its it's changed itself quite a bit. It no longer has two Y inputs. It now has an X and a Y. And you can see up here it says, can you see it on there? I think so. Channel one or X. Channel two or Y. So I have it on XY. Yeah, just, just for interest sake. Why does it say Jim watch out here? because that's the power switch that energizes the equipment on my bench. So <laughs> you're probably wondering, why? Is it? what am I watching out for? It's just this is the power and the main power switch here. OK. Um, and with that distraction, I totally lost what I was doing. So right now, this is sweeping across because of the output of this guy. So if we stop this guy, if I push stop, and we look, the scope stop. Let me turn it on again. And turn it off. I'll put it on. So it's sweeping very fast. So it's making a line. I'll slow it down. You can see it going. Now with this scope too, when you switch to XY, you have to recenter it. And uh, let me just move this a little bit here. I, I already did that actually. So I'm, um, but normally, when you first set this up, your scope will tend to trace over here, and you got to move it over to there with just the scope settings and, and normal stuff. So at this point where the dot is appearing right here, this would be the low frequency. And where it's disappearing, this is the top frequency. So 400 kilohertz, 500 kilohertz, 
450 in the middle. 450 is roughly the tuned frequency of an IF. Sometimes they're 460. There's a few other frequencies in there. Some old, old radios that might be as low as 260, stuff like that. But 455 is probably 80% of the time, 80 or 90% of the time correct. So we, we would think if an IF coil is resonant uh, at 455, right about here, then we would like to see some kind of a display like this. So that's what we're going to try to get going here. I have a cat calling me at the door. I can hear in the background. I'm going to ignore her. Others can take care of her. Let's take a look at the IF coil now. So this is a chassis I have around for exactly these kinds of purposes. It's still got most of its parts underneath there. What we're interested in is this IF coil here. If we look underneath, there's the connections for the coil. Get a little light on the topic here. One, two, three, four, because there's two coils, so there's got to be four wires. Um, you can see that these wires are still connected to this tube, and if we look on the top, with luck, you can see this is the 12 SA7. I know from experience this is the this is the first tube sending its signal to the next tube through this transformer. That means that that little that, that uh, clues me in that these wires are the primary side, and these are the secondary side on its way to the next the next uh, tube, basically. So we're going to feed the uh, sweep signal in here. I'll probably just clip up here because it's easier. And uh, I can do that right now. So if this is a junk box project, uh, if you're looking at uh, IFs out of a junk box, then you've probably got this can in your hand. But the same thing, same thing. No real difference there. Okay, so I'm going to plug this in. First I check, make sure the level's nothing. Right down. Nothing bad can happen here. We can't cause a fire or anything like that. Nothing like that. So now we want to hook the scope up to the secondary side of this coil. IF transformer. I should really call it what it is. IF transformer. So my scope leads are here. see the scope uh, up here. I think if I touch this, oh wait a minute, I grounded this. Let's put this back here like that. Okay, and if I touch this, yeah, get a huge signal on there. Perfect. And I'll just connect this to the secondary and I'm not going to pay any attention to any kind of polarity issues. If there are any, I don't think there are. Not for doing this kind of thing. So what can we find out from this test? Well, th 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 does this thing have any kind of tuned point at all? Uh, is there something wrong in this coil? Is the coil open circuited? Are there are other ways to do these things too, with an ohmmeter and stuff like that, but when it comes to can I make this thing tune, or, or what frequency is this resonant act at? That would be another question. You might, you might have an IF, you know, this one's just got some numbers on it. They don't mean anything to me. So what frequency is that IF coil? You could find out by doing this this style of testing. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, what is happening on the scope now. So the scope is showing the signal uh, arriving in the secondary of the transformer. I don't see anything. Not much signal going in. Amplitude control is very low. So I'm going to advance the amplitude. All the attenuation is on. So there's a total of 60 dB of attenuation going on here. So here we go. I'm going to turn it up, 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 turn it up. Oh! Right there. Okay, so we're going to get that a lot bigger in a moment. So here's one of the things I learned about the uh, about this sweep generator. A lot of punch is right in the end of this control. So you can advance it about 80% of the way, and you've only got about 20% of the output level. And you go to the last little bit, and bingo. 
a lot is in this last bit. So often I gotta have this thing right up full. Harmful to the instrument? No, I don't think so. So uh, we want to boost. Bo let me let me let me go back here. So I'm gonna boost the output by using these buttons now. Come back and look and watch. I'll hit the 10 dB. I jumped up 10 decibels. Here's 20. Hey, now look at what that looks like. Doesn't that look like a response curve? Let me put a little more brightness in it here. It sure does. Of course, it's going uh, up and down uh, in both directions because there's nothing uh, rectified about the signal. It's, it, you know, we're not looking at a detected signal. We're looking at an undetected, if that makes sense. <laughs> so, now, if it really is true that this is 400 and this is 500 and this is 450, then the IF is tuned at 4... Well, let's see. From here to here is 50 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Roughly now, 400, 410, 420, 430, 434, 433. That's what I think it's tuned to. Now, can, can we can we retune that thing and get it to where we want it? Let's take a look here. Okay, so you can still see the scope up here. I'm going to grab this guy. Now he's got two slugs. All, almost all these transformers have two slugs in them, an upper and a lower, or a primary and a secondary slug. So I'm going to start with this one here. Get on it. Okay. This is... get the tool to go in the slot in the slug. There we are. I'm in. Now, watch the scope very carefully. Even, uh... Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to switch cameras here. Hang on. A little better view of the scope. You know what I'm doing back here. Okay, I'm sticking that tool back in. I'm in the slot. I'm turning. You see it's getting a little bigger and smaller. Not by much. I mean, hang on a second here. There. Let me set it where it's highest. Now, I'm not saying this is behaving, this coil or transformer is behaving exactly as it would in a radio. The test instrument is uh, has impedances. My scope is a high impedance. The output of the sweep generator is some very low impedance. 50 ohms. Uh, maybe that's disturbing the, the way the coil works in there. So that didn't do much in terms of changing the frequency. Now what I'm doing over here, let me switch cameras again. So I, I, I fiddled from the bottom, now I'm going to fiddle from the top. Okay, I'm in. Switch cameras once again. Now I'll turn the primary side. Ah, it's moving. Oh, I lost grip here. Okay, I'm tune it. That's a bit of a battle to get it there. So that's now tuned to, well, we don't know exactly, do we? Let's check this thing out for precision now. Go back to here. I'm going to set this up so that 500 is dead center of my scope. J just kind of what we already have, because I'm going to make absolutely sure. So this is the start frequency. It's way off from where I want it. Okay, I'm going to bring it up to so 455. Incidentally. Just look at the scope here while I'm, I'm just turning it through the resonant point and back and forth. So, okay. We're going to start it. Let's see. To put 455 into the center line of the scope, we want to go, say, 20 kilohertz below and 20 kilohertz above 455. So 455 minus, say, 20 is 435. So that's what we're aiming for. 435. I get this fairly accurate here. Oh, that was pretty good there. 
So it's tricky getting this right on, eh? Not really not possible. Oh, that's really close. So that's four, three, five there now. So now we'll set the stop frequency. So we have to start the sweep and stop it. We have to have both these buttons down. And we want it to stop at uh, 455 plus 20, 475. 475, so we can get it here. Watch again as I, I approach the resonant point. You can see the scope jumping up and down there. Like even up here at 489, you can still see it. So maybe we got this a little too tight. That's okay, we'll do it again if it is. 475. What we're trying to figure out anyway is the exact frequency that this thing is tuned to. A little further. That's not bad. 475.3. So that should put 455 in the center. So let me turn on the uh, sweep again. Or turn off the stop. There's the sweep. So this is actually not, so. Uh, now we got to make sure this is balanced in the center of the scope. That the start and stop is in the same place. Let me get rid of the display there. You see very clearly where the line is starting and stopping. It's almost exactly right. Okay, so this is now exactly in the middle. Is it really? So. 455 should be right there. So again, we'll put on the display here. That's way over here. We can actually tell what the frequency is too, because you can go starting here. 455. I'm going to be 450, 445, 440, 435. The sweep generator puts out on the sweep out a signal between 0 and 5 volts no matter what the other settings are. So it's 0 to 5 volts all the time. So we should be seeing this is 0.5 volts per centimeter. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So five, 5 volts would be on a half a volt per thing. That'd be two and a half on a side. So one, two and a half. It should be all the way out. So I, I don't know why this isn't stretching all the way out. But because it's balanced on either side. And you could vary it with, no, you could vary it with this actually if you really wanted to but I am not going to fool around with that the main thing is that it's balanced on either side so the center is 455 we'll now try to tune tune the little tune the little transformer here see if we can get it all the way to 455 so if I was just checking these to see you know what their natural frequency is or what you know, what they're supposed to be. I would already know this one. It's supposed to be 455. There we are. Now, how do we know all this really worked? Well, we can take the sweep generator and turn it into a fixed, fixed frequency generator pretty simply. Just by, oh my gosh, I almost made the same mistake here, making the video mistake. Oop. There we go. Just by uh, stopping the sweep, now it's a single frequency uh, device. It's no longer sweeping, and because we have it stopped, it's at the stop end. If we put this into stopped but at the start then it's at the start start end somewhere in the midst of all this I just totally lost what the heck I'm trying to do oh yeah that's right gonna double check to see if we really have this thing tuned up to 455 
So all we got to do is watch the size of this. I'm going to move it more in the middle. This is just going to get bigger and smaller. And I'm going to move the frequency here using this up towards 455. And we'll find out where the peak is. Okay, so watching this now. And I'll find out if I'm telling the truth. So that, that's got to be the peak. And what frequency is it? Dum, da -dum. 454.5 is 455. So that's kind of how you could use the sweep generator to uh, check out an IF transformer and find out what its uh, resonant frequency uh, is, what kind it is. Now, if you had like open circuits in these things, um, you know, you would still get a response doing these kinds of tests. It, it wouldn't make much sense better off get out your own meter and check for uh, continuity through the coils and another thing that I was lucky is when you, when you look at one of these IFs sometimes it can be tricky to tell which is the primary side and which is the secondary side but uh, these the radios are built thoughtfully so usually you'll find that a signal is actually passing through the radio just like this so if, if it's coming this way this has to be the primary and the way I, I did it was I figured out oh this is the 6SA7 12SA7 tube this is the front end tube this is where the signal's going this way so I can figure out primary secondary if you hook it up backwards fool around um, you probably sort it out eventually and the particular behavior of this coil in that when I'm tuning the secondary and it just changed the level and tuning the primary move the resonant point I'm not sure if that's true all the time in all IFs I just don't know I've never done this before but it's pretty interesting I'm looking for another, another IF coil well somewhere in one of my junk boxes somewhere somewhere I have another IF coil I suspect it's actually the other one out of this radio because it's been taken out. Where did I put that? You know I think I took that out and stuck it in another radio. I think I did that. There we go. So I, I hope that explains enough about uh, the uh, sweep generator. You know, when I'm doing work in here, I'm, I'm barely explaining what I'm doing. Um, you need to have your thinking cap on. I, I, I say things wrong. I don't go into detail about stuff thoughts go through my head I don't share all kinds of stuff is going on here it's, 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 because I'm doing it live and not uh, you know writing a script and, and uh, we'll try that again Cut, try it again I don't do that I just keep going keep going as you know if you watch my videos just a guy working in the shop to the best of his ability so I, again I, I, I hope, hope that helped and I hope uh, if you are not the one person who asked me to do that if you found that interesting uh, anyway uh, that's it. Hey, got a radio to bring in here and get going on. Wait till you see the next radio.